Hello guys and welcome back to the channel for another episode of Hood Gaming's Tactic Tester. This is episode number four. We've already ran three tactics through the gauntlet and we've already got three very good results up this week. We have JDFM, potentially the nicest guy in the Football Manager community. I'm going to leave a link to his uh, channel in the description. I'm also going to pop a card in now to his channel. Make sure you guys go over and subscribe him. Say that Hood Gaming sent you from the Tactic Tester. Uh, as, of, as I said, probably one of the nicest guys in the community. So make sure you go out and give him a, 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 the support he deserves for lending his tactic to be tested as part of this series. So he is about to import his tactic, or we're about to import his tactic into this Arsenal save. Let's remind you guys of the rules before we get into it. <laughs> So guys, here you have the rules for the tactic tester. Tactics must have a proven record of success slash achievement, which we will get into with JDFM's tactic in a moment. All tactics will use the same team and fixtures for the test. That will be Arsenal uh, with a specific set of determined fixtures apart from cup games, which we cannot control. Uh, no transfers will be allowed to be made in either transfer window. Tactics will be loaded in and the whole season will be simulated as one. All points, wins, goals scored and win percentage will be collected and displayed at the end of the video to find out the best tactic out there. So guys, that is the rules refreshed so you guys should know what is going on. As I said, we've already put three tactics through the ringer already. Uh, a tactic of my own, one from RDF Tactics and one from FM Stinger. I am still, surprisingly, top of the tree with a 66.66% uh, win ratio. Now, RDF, absolute lunatic, put a one centre-back tactic into the tactic tester. So I think for a fact that he finished in fourth with Arsenal is no mean feat. And FM Stinger's 352 was a tactic designed for Inter Milan. So it wasn't necessarily designed for this tactic tester. It was just a tactic that he has already had success with. So it's going to be interesting to see how we get on. I'm looking forward to a different shape. Obviously, th this, this tactic from Atalanta is a very good one. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it gets on. Uh, Stinger's was a very similar shape and was very, very good at 4-2-3-1 and against 4-3-3. So I wonder if that is the this is the counter to those sorts of formations which are so, so prevalent in Football Manager this year. So up on the screen now is JDFM's achievements with this formation. As you can see, he managed to pick up a impressive treble during the beta period. Uh, they managed to win the Serie A title, pipping Juventus to it. Uh, at the top of the table as you can see from the graph there he was basically top the entire season they were only expected to qualify for the Europa League so due to finish between fifth and seventh and they managed to top the league um which is an unbelievable result they were expected to reach the semi-finals of the Italian Cup and they managed to lift that and then th the crowning achievement for me was winning the Champions League albeit on penalties but they played Manchester City in the final. They beat them on penalties, as you can see on screen. However, the board expectation was to only reach the first knockout round. And to go all the way with a team, the size and, team and budget of size of Atalanta's is nothing short of remarkable. So let's get into the game and let's take a look at his tactic. So then, guys, we are back at Arsenal. We are ready to put in JDFM's tactic into the tactic tester. Um, I'm not going to go into massive detail of the tactic. JDFM or Johnny has a video on his channel already uh, breaking down this tactic, the roles, why he picked them, etc., etc. So I'm going to leave that as a card for you guys to go and check out right now. Uh, make sure you do, as I said, go over there, hit the subscribe button on his channel. But as a quick run through, you've got a sweeper keeper, two ball playing defenders, uh, two wing backs, which obviously for him were Hatabor and Guzan, who are two very good players for that. Uh, the Anchorman, box-to-box -box midfielder and Mazala on a support duty, uh, an advanced playmaker on attack, uh, a trequartista and then a complete forward. Um, as we do in the tactic tester, we hit the quick pick button just to see, just to put some faces to the names, just to see what happens in terms of this Arsenal team. So as things stand, we've gone for Leno in goal, holding alongside Gabriel Bellerin, Thomas Partey as the anchorman, and Saka on the uh, left wing back role, Xhaka alongside Ceballos, Mesut Ozil as the advanced playmaker, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang alongside Lacazette up top 
um, I think this is going to be one of the one of the more interesting shapes. Um, it should be very defensively solid, as you kind of would expect with these uh, three, no, with these five at the back, really. Um, an interesting one is uh, Kieran Tierney not being picked over Saka, maybe for me. Um, and I think Xhaka is probably a better anchor man than Thomas Party, but. Now we are in the hands of the FM gods. I'm going to sim this season. I will be back to show you guys the results in just a few seconds. So then guys, we are back at the end of the season and we are ready to take a look at JDFM's 5-3-2 tactic. Now the first thing I can see just from the home screen is that Arsenal managed to finish third with 76 points. It's a pretty close full race uh, with Manchester United finishing way off the pace. Um, as have Tottenham. Wow, Tottenham finishing ninth with a minus goal difference. Unreal scenes. Um, so, let's get into the competition, shall we? Let's see how Arsenal did in all competitions. So, finished third in the Premier League. Knocked out in the semi-finals of the Europa League by Sporting. The board expectation was to reach the final. Uh, so, that is slightly disappointing. Knocked out also in the semi-final of the FA Cup by Manchester United. Uh, they don't care about the Carabao Cup, but they did get knocked out in the third round by Birmingham. That's that's a very ropey result. And they were runners up in the Community Shield. Um, looking at things, though, top goal scorer for Arsenal in the Premier League was Lacazette with 17 goals. Uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang uh, with the highest average rating of 7.26. Not too bad at all. And Mesut Ozil coming out uh, with nine assists in the Premier League as well. Not too shabby. Uh, first things first then, let's take a look at the schedule and see how they got on. So they lost the Community Shield, or Charity Shield, whichever one it's called now, to Liverpool. Uh, on penalties, Granite Xhaka missing the deciding one there. And all of Liverpool's takers managing to slot. Um, not necessarily the best performance, but it is Liverpool. So you, that you never know. Seems like a very nice run to start the season. Good wins against Sheffield United, Fulham, Wolves. We'll discount the loss to Birmingham uh, in the Carabao Cup. That again, that one that on penalties. Seems like penalties decide a lot when you sim the sim the games this year. Went on a nice little run until they lost to Crystal Palace in the Premier League. That's a very interesting one and one you wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, yeah, it's like goals from Zaha, Jordan Ayew, and Milio, Milio Jevic. I hate saying that guy's name. Uh, and Mazzuto Ozil just putting the, the one up for Arsenal there. Then things kind of corrected a little bit. Nice positive win against Spurs away. Um, nice one to see there. But again, a loss to Aston Villa. Again, it's a team you don't expect uh, someone like Arsenal to be losing to. But they have done a lot. Uh, lost to some of these more ropey teams like the Palaces, like the Villas. Uh, lost down here to Burnley as well, 1-0 away at Turf Moor. It's a late goal, 81st minute. Um, the, the, the tough, tough uh, Christmas back-to-back -back against Manchester City. They lost 2-0 at home, two goals inside the first 10 minutes. And then they went up to the Etihad and won 2-0 themselves. So that kind of balances everything out. Really, really nice run in, in January and February here. Went unbeaten for a long period of time. All the way down, didn't lose a game until Krasnodar. Krasnodar in the Europa League. Um, their pass in the Europa League, not the easiest by and Leverkusen. They won both those games 1-0. Uh, beat Krasnodar 2-0 uh, at home and then 2-1 uh, away. So they went through on aggregate. 0-0 draw with Liverpool. It seems like things were starting to tick up really nicely here. 4-0 victory against Birmingham. El Nene with four. Okay. Mohamed El Nene scoring four goals. Unreal. Uh, then they went to Ashton Gate and beat my team 3-0 in the FA Cup. They beat Bristol City, Bellerin, Pepe and Lacazette on the goals there. Go through in the Europa League quarterfinal stage. I think this is probably the furthest that anyone has got in the tactic tester, from, if memory serves me correctly. Um, beating Shakhtar 2-1 and then 3-1. That seems relatively, um, relatively comfortable there. Uh, lost to Manchester United on penalties at Wembley. Oh, that's devastating. Pepe and Thomas Partey both missing their penalties. Bruno uh, Fernandez Cavani. I don't know who this guy is. Mayer uh, scoring for Manchester United as well. Um, and Mason Greenwood. That's very disappointing. Uh, as I said, fine margins. Losing a lot, a lot, a lot on penalties uh, in these simulations. Uh, then they absolutely pumped Chelsea. 7-0 at home at the Emirates. Then this is, this is where they went out of the Europa League. So, Sporting 
Lost 1-0 at home. Coates with the goal. Um, looks like they're playing Willian alongside Lacazette. So I can only imagine that Aubameyang was injured during this period. I can't see why you wouldn't play him, especially even as a substitute. Uh, and then they went to the away leg and drew 0-0 at Sporting. It was very disappointing to see um, going out to someone like Sporting. If they'd gone out to someone like Bayern Leverkusen, you'd actually think it's a slightly better uh, fit. But a ropey May uh, draws with Villa, Everton. Nice result against Chelsea again. Losing 4-0 to Liverpool. No, slight, no shame there. And then uh, a 0-0 draw with Manchester United to round off the season. So the Premier League was a success in my opinion. Let's go and take a look at the squad using this fantastic view from Passion for FM. So let's uh, arrange them by appearances. Let's see who made the most appearances. Leno, Lacazette and Thomas Partey the most appearances. As you can see though, as I mentioned, um, we've got a Bamiyang down here. I think he only made 30, yeah, 30 appearances and one as a substitute. So I can only assume Pierre Emerick Aubameyang got injured this year. Got injured twice, three times even. Ouch, twisted knee, broken ankle in a match against Millwall. Shock. Uh, and then he pulled his groin as well. So as I said, Aubameyang missing is probably a key one for this team. Uh, let's take a look at some of their other stats. In terms of goals, let's sort them by goals. Uh, we've got Lacazette uh, coming out on top with 23. Aubameyang, 16. Pepe, 15. And then he with 8, but he scored 4 in one game, don't forget. William Ozil, Eddie and Ketia. Kind of what you would expect. Uh, in top, in terms of assists, I think that's going to be Mesut Ozil coming out on top. It is with 15 assists. Uh, then we've got Saka with 9. Tierney with 8. Uh, Ashley Maitland-Niles with uh, with seven. So, you know, the, the team was scoring a decent amount of goals. If we organise them by uh, points, what is this? Points, points one per game. Who was the key player for them? As you can see here, 2.4. 2.4 when Callum Chambers played and he didn't play too much. Reese Nelson. Elneny was kind, looks like a kind of key player as well. Uh, William, Joe Willock, Glaston. Actually, you can see some very interesting ones here. Who was the worst when Matt Macy played? Okay, yeah, that's going to be a cup game. Who's the lowest rated starter? You'd probably imagine Ozil, but he's almost averaging two points a game himself. So not too shabby moving forward. Uh, let's take a look at the team report. We'll dive into the analyst report and see how they have been getting on. So... Uh, in terms of the general performance based on the Premier League, you can see here they've scored more goals per game. Their XG per game is absolutely massive, uh, but they've also conceded more per game and give up, given up uh, a worse XG. Good shots. Uh, shot percentage, not necessarily the best. So let's take a look at the scoring. Let's pull things up here. Arsenal are uh, a decent conversion rate. They're aggressive and clinical. They have lots of shots and they are managing to put them in the net with this formation. So that is good to see. Let's take a look at the defensive side of stuff. Opposition conversion rate, very low. They're very quiet. They don't face a lot of shots, but they are also pretty impenetrable as well. One of the best in the league, actually. Actually, that's probably the best in the league because although they face a few more than Liverpool and Manchester City, they're not conceding as uh, many. So that is a very, very good positive. Now, this is the bit that I wanted to take a look at the most. We are wanting to see how they get on look at how they've absolutely decimated this 4-3-3 as i looked at stingers uh, fm stingers tactic previously he did very very well against this formation as well so maybe the option uh, when you come up against a 4-3-3 like this with the defensive midfielder and two in front of it is having the the fullbacks not necessarily playing wingers yourself uh having the the 3-5-2 or the 5-3-2 Looks like it's very successful. Obviously, you can see here, plus 18 in chances created for and against. Um, is there anyone who they anything that they really struggled against? The worst thing that they struggled against was a 4-4-2, but I'd imagine that some cup games, uh, which they didn't necessarily do too well in the domestic cups, or at least in the Carabao Cup. So yeah, this is very, very interesting reading. Very, very interesting reading. I love looking, looking through this and uh, taking a look at what the team has done. So... 
That is the review of JDFM's tactic. Let's get into the leaderboard. So then guys, we have had four tactics through on the tactic tester and this is the current state of the leaderboard. I somehow am still top with 66.66 win ratio. And you can see JDFM there. Let's go take, through, take you through his results from left to right. Uh, no trophies won. They did finish third in the Premier League. Uh, a total of 76 points, which is the second highest that we have had. He does pip RDF in terms of his total points won. Goal scored 107, puts him in third. Uh, goals conceded though, just 42. That was the least that we have seen in this tactic tester thus far. So it did seem like a very good defensive formation. Uh, goals per game of 1.81. I'm going to put some of this down to the fact that Bamiyang was injured for a large chunk of the season. Obviously, he is one of Arsenal's best forwards. So having him injured for the time period that JDFM did have is not ideal. And he does finish with a win percentage of 59.32%. So then guys, we have had four tactics through the tactic tester. Do you think your tactic is good enough to run this gauntlet? If you do, don't forget to reach out to me either in the comments section of this video down below or drop me a tweet or an Instagram, a direct message me, show me your shape, show me the success that you've had with it, and I'm sure we can get you up and running on this series to see, how, see if you can knock me off of top spot. I'm not meaning to boast, but I am still top. What can I say? Um, if you have enjoyed the video and you are enjoying the series, don't forget to drop a like on it and subscribe to my channel. And obviously make sure you go and check out all of the creators that have been part of this series. Head over there, drop them a subscription as well. Make sure you ring that bell so you know when they are notified, uh, so you're notified when they are posting videos. They are all fantastic creators. So make sure you go out there and show them the love that they deserve. I will be back for another video very soon and another episode of this next weekend. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there.